but my question is actually uh, in the line of music. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a leader in the youth movement uh, of today. And um, uh, we are really followed by a lot of them. And uh, we do hip hop, reggae, uh, all that urbanized kind of music. Actually, that's what I've been doing on the other, in the other building a few minutes ago. Uh, my question is, what's uh, your opinion, or rather, what, wh why is the church divided so much in this, whereby we are, we are dismi dismissed by so many churches, but yet embraced by so many more? and yet we speak the undiluted word of God in our music. And Rick Warren tells me that words are what matters in rhythm, not the beat. Uh, what's your, what, what, what knowledge, what wisdom can you share with me about all that? <laughs> <clears throat> That's very easy. If you're doing hip hop in church, you need to repent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's a very sensitive question because people are, are socialized with different types of, uh, of worship and, um, and, and uh, approaching God. And the habits that we form go into defining who we are for the most part. That's why your handwriting never changes most of the time. It, it, it's, it's the same thing. People can look at what you write and tell that it's you who wrote it. And when people are socialized, for example, with, with hymns, I grew up singing hymns, and I really love hymns. I would have a, I'm sorry, but I, have a hard, I would have a hard time with, with hip-hop, because I don't even know how to do hip-hop. Um, uh, so <clears throat> depending on who, who the audience is and who, who you are speaking to, I think Rick Warren is right. The, 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 uh, what matters is the message that you're communicating and also what, uh, what ideas your music may be giving to the people who are listening to you. You have to be very careful uh, with that as well because you're communicating not just the words but also uh, uh, in an environment, a way of looking at things you are, and you're giving that to the people that you're speaking to. There is a way that you can stand in front of uh, uh, an audience trying to, to, um, to worship God, to lead them to worship God, and end up leading them away from worshiping God. So we have to be careful about all those things. But uh, what I would say in terms of uh, churches not accepting some styles of, of worship and all that, I think that's, that's not necessarily um, a sign that there's something spiritually wrong with the people. It's just that they, they are used for a different style of worship. In Africa, we are very, very expressive in the way we, we, we worship God. But in church, the churches here where you can see somebody barely moves, but you can see they, uh, they, are, they, are, still <laughs> they are still in their way uh, committed to God. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You can actually be very expressive and be far away from God, and you can be still in, in uh, concentrating on God and at that moment be connected with, with, with God. So those, those are, that is not, the, the, uh, the Christian faith makes a distinction between the essential things in the faith, things that are non-negotiable, that have to be there for uh, the occasion to count as Christian or God-honoring, and those are very specific. For example, the major doctrines like the deity of Christ, the Trinity, the atonement, uh, the, uh, the inspiration of the scriptures, those kinds of things, those, those have to be in place. These others are forms, and they, they can take different, different shape depending on, on the person that, that you're speaking to. So you should not feel bad that not everybody appreciates um, hip hop. I mean hip hop, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> so you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't feel bad that not everybody does, but you should be able to serve God faithfully to, uh, to the people that you are able to reach and be able to represent Christ there because you will end up reaching people that a pastor who doesn't move when he sings is not able to reach. I remember, which is, this is a, actually a, a amazing about um, Dr. Zacharias' ministry. I was, a colleague and I were speaking in Falda, 
and we went to, we went to, a, we were in a, in a restaurant after, after we spoke. Let me see these young men coming, coming at us with tattoos all over and chains and everything and, and funny looking hair and they are, they are walking towards us. They were, they were coming straight at us and I almost took off. <laughs> 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 then when they got to our table, this is what they said. They said, we heard you, we heard you two speaking, speak today and we just want to tell you what your ministry has meant to us. We listen to you every day. We, we summarize your messages and we, we take the messages to people who look like us. And we have led many people to Christ doing this. And so once, there are people that you will reach that uh, somebody like me who hasn't learned hip hop yet <laughs> cannot be able to reach. So be encouraged and stay, stay connected with the church that is going to, to feed you the word of God so that you are really becoming who God wants you to be and he will use you and direct you in, in, in that calling as well. <clears throat> okay, in the interest of time, in the interest of time, before Dr. Zacharias answers the question, please keep your questions short because I was given only 30 minutes for the Q&A session. Yeah. So please keep your questions short, clear, to the point. And maybe we'll keep our answers short too or we'll never get to the end. <laughs> I'll just add a couple of points. Uh, you know, Andrew Fletcher, the Scottish political activist of the 18th century said this, let me write the songs of a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. Let me write the songs of a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. Because he believed music and the songs could st steer a whole generation of young people in a different direction, regardless of what the laws called for. Music is a very powerful instrument. I wish I could say to you I grew up listening to Brahms and Mendelssohn and all this. Instead, I, was, I grew up listening to the Beatles and Elvis Presley and Cliff Richard. And my dad used to say to me, what nonsense are you listening to? You know, he, he couldn't stand uh, Presley's voice in the background. I used to borrow it from my friend. So I struck middle ground and Nat King Cole came into the scene. and country music and so on, I enjoyed all of them. Music will keep changing because tastes will fluctuate from generation to generation. John is absolutely right. Understand your audience and see what it is that the audience really will be engaged with in your music. If he's given you the gift of music, it's a remarkable gift. To be honest with you, it's one gift I wish I had the gift of playing an instrument so that I could sit under a tree some night and just sing to myself and not bore anybody else from a guitar or whatever, but I don't have it. My wife plays instruments, my children all played, I didn't. The thing about music is that it is the language of the soul. You can argue philosophically in many, many ways, but music brings the emotions into reality where you utter emotions that are expressing what you're really feeling. But music is very seductive, very seductive. It can make the means an end in itself. I've known people who took the means and it ultimately destroyed them because music brings with it an artistic mind and an artistic mind will sometimes float with emotions and aesthetics and not anchor it to reason and argument. You have to find middle ground. So don't let it become a God. Let it become a means to point people to God. So here's the point I want to make to you. There are errors in form and there are errors in, and corruptions of substance. In forms we will differ and they may be erroneous. Never corrupt the substance. The substance of what you sing about must always be pointing people to the truth that is greater than its instrument. Those of us in the older generation need to realize how powerful music is for the young, and we need to recognize that. But those who are young need to remember music is a carrier <clears throat> of memories. And if we in our churches forget the older ones, forget the elderly ones, those whose memories have been bathed in certain kinds of songs, and we forget singing those songs, we are amputating them from the past, and that's a cruel thing to do to somebody who wants to live with the memory of all that has gone on in their lives as well. So our churches need balance in understanding the music for the young 
and the memories for the elderly and bring together the kind of music that will connect the present to the future. Because if we forget those in their senior years, when the turn comes for the youth 30, 40 years from now, and they are forgotten too, it will be a very painful experience. Music should be a connector to memories and retain the substance of truth. That is what I would encourage you to do. <clears throat> Thank you.